Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the press conference right ahead of the start of the conference EU space for business. I'd like to introduce the speakers on the podium. We have uh, Norbert Hofer, the Federal Minister for Transport, Innovation and Technology, Presidency of the EU Council. On the left, from your perspective, is Beata Bienkowska, Commissioner for Internal Market, Industry, Entrepreneurship and SMEs. Right next to me, Rico Duque, former astronaut and Spanish Minister for Science and Innovation, Chair of the ESA Council at Ministerial level. And on the very left side from your perspective, Stefan Irai, CEO of Ariana Space SES. We have time until like three o'clock, then the conference has to start. And I would like to start with uh, Minister Hofer with his statement about yeah, the, the importance of the development of the space sector in Austria and what that, that means to Austria. Thank you so much. First of all, I have to say that I always thought that I'm very cool as a minister because I'm flying my, my, my Cessna aircraft and uh, I'm biking, but he's an astronaut here, so I have uh, <laughs> no chance you know, to, be, to be cooler than, than you are. It's really good, <laughs> it's really good to, to have you here in, in, in Graz. Um, we have this big event here, which is organized uh, by my ministry in cooperation with Commissioner Bienkowska Directorate. Thank you, thank you so much. Space is a key industrial sector in Europe's economy and a strategic asset supporting Europe's independence of action at a global stage. Europe is already the world's second largest space power and should aim at further strengthening its global position and autonomy in the new space area to respond to growing international competition, increasing private sector involvement and major technology shifts. These are the real important things we have to discuss today. Reaffirming Europe's ambitions in space is more than ever required in the changing global environment. Austrian is setting three key activities aiming uh, at ensuring that Europe continues to get the place it deserves in the global space economy. First activity concerns the reg regulation establishing a space program of the Union. The regulation is a high political priority uh, for our presidency and uh, we intend to advance as far as possible with the preparation of the Council's position on the proposal. Depending on the negotiations progress, we aim to reach a partial general approach or a substantial progress report uh, that could be adopted by the Competitiveness Council on the 3rd, on the, on the 3rd of November uh, this year. The second activity concerns the governments. The Spanish Minister Pedro Duque and I have proposed first to re-establish the informal Space Council in order to discuss more strategic aspects and to define a long-term perspective for space activities and second uh, to further improve the coordination and cooperation between ESA and the European Commission. Our proposal had been highly welcomed at the ESA Interministerial inter Meeting in Madrid on the 25th of October and I would like to, um, to thank Commissioner Bienkowska and uh, the ESA General Director Werner for the really living cooperation. And now, the third activity is our conference here in Graz. The European space policy cannot be elaborated in isolation, of course. It needs to be conceived as a component of a broader ensemble. In this respect, it is critically important to know what the rest of the world is doing, to understand their rationale and to draw the lessons learned from the experience. Thus, at this conference, we bring together key European and US stakeholders to discuss the global space developments and the consequences for the European institutions and industry, as well as security challenges to space infrastructures. Let me tell you what is going on here in Austria. Um, Austria has given the size of our country a considerable space sector. We have 120 companies and research institutions with more than 1,000 employees and a turnover of around 125 million euros. That's a lot for such a small country like Austria. 
The Ministry for Transport, Innovation and Technology has uh, provided a meaningful contribution to this. We invest around 100 million euro per year in space technologies and applications. Our priorities are direct support through the National Space Program, a sustainable space infrastructure but through the EU flagship programs Copernicus and Galileo, as well as the participation in ESA programs that stimulate our business and science communities. Thank you very much, Minister Hofer. Now, Commissioner Biankowska, what role does the European Commission play in creating the right ecosystem for Europe's future space activities? We are trying to, uh, to manage the European space program the best possible way and and, uh, and also we, are, we will discuss it also uh, today at the conference, the future of EU space programs. Because it has to be said first, of course, I want to thank Austrian Presidency, you personal minister for uh, co-organizing this event with us, for, for hosting us here in, in Graz for, for the conference. This is important moment because as minister said, um, this is a moment when we are in the middle of the discussion for the, uh, on the on the next uh, regulation on the on the space programs, European space programs. Um, and what I want to underline again is that we we really we, we achieved as a Europeans a lot in the space program. These are these are our, our collective achievements. Uh, Galileo and Copernicus, so our two programs, they are on time, on budget. Galileo, the European satellite um, uh, positioning system, which works with G GPS, but it mu is much more precise, it's but be better than, than GPS. And Copernicus, our European eye on Earth, so those two programs. And of course, we are uh, on one hand discussing the, the regulation, but of course also discussing the money and so how, how much money we will dedicate to those, to those programs in the, in the future. Um, MFF, multi-annual financial framework. We propose uh, as a commission 16 billion euros for the programs. Uh, this is substantial, uh, this is massive even, uh, and, and we want to, to manage this money and to, and to discuss the regulation to achieve the best, the best results for, for European. Because the, the, the space sector is undergoing really a massive changes nowadays. First, again, as Minister said, you said almost everything. <laughs> so uh, first, uh, it's, it's, it's more and more uh, important for the, for the European economy as a whole. It's not only for, for space sector itself, but this is really important one of, if not the most important, if it's not becoming the most important sector for the, for the European economy as a whole. Uh, then we have a very um, uh, concrete links and, and visible links with uh, our space uh, security and defense and what we are doing at the European level in this, in this aspect. Uh, and third, of course, the, the private sector is changing. So the, so the um, uh, title of the uh, conference, so the EU space for business, is really important because we, what we want to achieve um, uh, is, uh, is, for example, to, to back our, our companies, our space startups with a very strong uh, venture capital money uh, and venture capital funds. Of course, we'll discuss also in the in the in the at the conference. Um, we are also uh, seek to maintain our autonomous access to space, and that's why we will propose in the for the future as a commission. We are proposing uh, two oh. new programs, so space situational awareness, which will help to map and detect the breeze in the space, and govsat.com which is a program of, of secured uh, satellite commun communication, which is crucial, for instance, in the, in the, um, uh, during the natural disasters. Uh, so these are two really strategic assets for Europe, uh, and um, uh, the strategic assets, uh, we wanted them to be the, the, the central element of European strategic autonomy. Um, so uh, so this, these are the, the, the points that we are going to discuss during the conference. As I said, this is an extremely important moment. That's why I, I, I am really grateful for organizing this, co this conference together with the presidency in ESA, with Minister Duque, um, uh, and, and, uh, and of course our friend from Ariane Spas. <laughs> uh, it's, um, uh, it's, it's, it's never enough to, to discuss the, the space issues because, as I said, that are highly important for the European economy, not for the sake of the space itself. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Minister Duque, as a former astronaut, you have already mentioned, we of course have a first-hand space flight experience on a space shuttle mission and during a visit to ISS. 
which actions from your perspective need to be taken to strengthen Europe's position in the space sector? Yes, as uh, Mr. Hoffer said, uh, Europe's position in the space sector is uh, quite uh, predominant, so we are depending on how you count it, it could be number two in the world. So we have uh, achieved the technical prowess and industrial capabilities in order to um, show that uh, we can be forward in that. Uh, certainly, uh, this has been done during the last uh, 50 years. And of course, having worked at the European Space Agency, I've been witness to like the, the last 25 or so. and. Uh, and this has put the ground uh, in order for Europe to uh, to have uh, uh, this uh, preeminence in the in the space sector. It is um, it is something that people maybe don't understand uh, as well as we understand it from inside. Uh, now the world cannot work without the internet, but the world cannot work without space assets. It's something that. Uh, it's, it's, it's not an option anymore. So uh, certainly the, the scientific achievements and, and, the, and the launchers and, and everything that has been done in the last 50 years has to, is now um, completed with uh, programs that are useful for the economy and that, that uh, put Europe in a position to not depend on anybody else. Uh, and this is uh, what we, what we are trying to to talk about today. Uh, it is um, essential that uh, on the one hand um, the European economy can rely on systems that are that, that we can con we can control ourselves. I think this is very important. The, the, the sector will continue to develop new technologies. Oh, this is one of the most uh, one of the areas of development in which it is uh, more cost efficient to develop new technologies. We put very high goals to people, to technicians, engineers, and scientists to do something that has never been done before, and people really make the most effort, and, and, and technologies developed in here then afterwards not only make us be able to locate ourselves any place in the planet and communicate with each other, which are the two most important things in space today, and observe the Earth from above so that we know, but also uh, all these technologies that we develop permeate to the rest of the market. And this is, this is the, these are the two, the two aspects of, uh, of the need for Europe to really step up the efforts so that we uh, get behind in the new areas. Um, one thing that I just said, so engineers, scientists, they get a big enthusiasm for doing uh, uh, the, the conquest of space. And if they are astronauts flying, then it's even more, but also the public. So we are using public money. So aside from all these uh, programs in which we uh, create value, then it is sometimes interesting, and I, I always, I'm always an advocate for that, to have programs that inspire people, the youth, the, the new generation, so things that we are doing that nobody is doing. And one thing very specific for Europe, we need to be doing things that we can only do together, and that people like that we do, and that people feel proud that we do. And one of those things, maybe, is getting together and, and, and and becoming number one in space one day. And I think maybe we can, we can do that, maybe we can land people in the moon or in Mars one day, and, uh, and this, this will probably be the next step that we can, we can try to be part of those endeavors in the future. I think that, that inspiring people is almost as important as giving them the, the commercial over the, the space assets that will allow them to do the commercial developments. Uh, hopefully we can also agree on some very inspiring <coughs> use of public money. Thank you, Minister Foucault. Now to Mr. Israel. Ariana Space takes a unique position in the space industry, providing also the crucial last step between Europe's space ambitions and fully operational satellites in orbit. 
What outlook can you give us on the next months and years? Yes, so may yes, maybe a few words on Iron Space and after I will, uh, uh, I will uh, tackle more general topics on space. So Iron Space, we operate from the French Guiana uh, different rockets, basically uh, Ariane, Vega, and in a cooperation uh, with uh, Roscosmos Soyuz. And as an example, uh, our last uh, launches are very emblematic of our ambition. In July, and we had the pleasure to have uh, Commissioner Biankowska and Pedro Duque, we have made a launch for Galileo. We have launched four satellites, so it's all about uh, European uh, autonomy when it comes to positioning and navigation. In August, we have launched uh, with Vega ADM, which is a satellite dedicated uh, to uh, wind knowledge and to, to climate. Uh, in September, we have launched the 100 IM5, and it was uh, an IM5 fully dedicated to our commercial customers, uh, showing our ability to export and to be successful on the open market. And last but not least, it was uh, in October, we have made a wonderful launch for BP Colombo. BP Colombo is the most ambitious project from ESA Science. Uh, when it comes to, uh, to going to uh, Mercure, uh, it's, uh, the, we will be the third uh, uh, space power having the ability to go to, to Mercure. So the last launches we have done are, I think, a good example of what we can bring uh, to Europe, what we can deliver, and what are our unique capabilities. We are for sure preparing the arrival of Ion 6 and Vega C, and what is very important is that these launchers have two ambitions or two, f two uh, I would say, future boosters uh, to give a picture. The commercial market for sure, because this is what we know how to do for years, but institutional markets. These launchers have been designed, have been sought, have been, uh, I would say, uh, assembled to fulfill all European needs, all payloads to be sent by uh, European countries. And this is why it is very important we go now for these commitments to our uh, institutional launches. I want to say that the European Commission and ESA have been the first to buy uh, some IM6. We have been awarded uh, last year uh, a first contract for two uh, IM6 for four Galileo satellites. So Commissioner Bielkowska has made a decision which is totally instrumental for our future and has given a very strong example to other institutions, but now we need to go one step further when it comes to aggregating this institutional demand. We need to have bulk procurement as it exists in the US. We need to have a European commitment of all European institutions, which are the European Commission for sure, ESA, UMEDSAT. We will launch a satellite tomorrow evening for UMEDSAT and European member states. Just to maybe to, to expand a little bit uh, what I would like to say, uh, maybe four ideas. First, uh, I want to thank the European Commission, uh, Member States and the Commission for uh, the leadership on space. We have ESA, which is absolutely key for our future, and we have the European Commission. And the European Commission, oh. with the budget, the next MFF, with all what we have done, uh, this last year uh, has taken uh, uh, an instrumental role for our future. So what will be decided by the European uh, Commission, by European institutions, will be absolutely key for our future. And uh, I want to thank Commissioner Bienkowska for our personal involvement in uh, these space ambitions. Second, there, is, there has never been as uh, strong, uh, I would say, uh, actuality of space. I'm not sure that actuality is totally uh, relevant in English. I would, I would say actuality in français. But um, space is about security. Space is about climate. Space is about connectivity. What the satellites we, we launch can deliver in <coughs> these three areas, security, connectivity, and climate, have no equivalence from what can be done by terrestrial solutions. And uh, we have never uh, need as much as today security, climate, uh, climate uh, monitoring, and connectivity. So this is the first reason why space is so uh, now uh, everywhere. And second, in the US, there is now a theory, and it's not only a theory, it's acts towards space dominance. 
US are strong allies, we, we, we cooperate with NASA, so they are friends, but it is clear that they are putting a level of ambition which has no precedent, no precedent. This ambition is political, this ambition is financial, this ambition is in terms of deregulation. And it raises a big issue for Europe. Pedro has uh, mentioned that uh, uh, maybe he would dream of human flags. What you must know is that human flags will be at the heart of what the US are going to do in the coming years. Next year, the US will be back on the human flags. And I think it raises a good question for Europe. I do not say that everything is possible. We have limited budget, but I think it raises a, a, a strong question. So, uh, US dominance, how do we answer to this uh, willingness? Third, and uh, it has been uh, highlighted uh, by uh, uh, the, the minister in his introduction, we have unique European capabilities. We have SMEs, we have startups, and we have for sure big companies. They are everywhere in Europe. You have mentioned uh, uh, the importance for the Australian, the Australian uh, uh, economy. It is clear for other countries. So we have unique European capabilities. When it comes to satellites, when it comes to launcher, we are one of the best in the world, and we must now create the conditions to go on with this success. <coughs> and so, last but not least, very quickly, so what we need from Europe is ambition, and this is all about uh, the budget proposed by uh, DG Gruen by the commissioner, which is uh, significant. For sure, we would like a little more, but uh, 16 billion is already uh, outstanding. <laughs> but we will ask a little more. But uh, we acknowledge this level of ambition. Space is about research. And here, maybe we still have to work together to better um, uh, understand on our side what is the ambition of the European Commission in terms of research, how the different companies are going to work together. And last but not least, uh, space is about access to space, and this is why, uh, following the example uh, given by the European Commission, it's really important for us uh, that all European stakeholders are going to this uh, autonomous access to space. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Israel. We still have some minutes before the speakers will return to the Middle East to open the space conference, so if you have any questions, please just raise a hand. And is this budget uh, an annual budget or for <laughs> 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 some, some in this room want it to be annual, but it's, no, it's for seven years. <laughs> but it's a very good budget. It's not, it's not too, too few money. It's really, of course, as, as it was said, uh, some of our companies uh, would, would likely see more money, but this is a very good budget and we fight it for it a lot. So you, you, probably, you probably understand that especially in the times of really, uh, um, and in, in the times of really money constraints that we have connected with the uh, future, uh, with the Brexit mostly, uh, it's, it's enough for, for money this for... Is, this is excluding the military expenses. Sorry? The military expenses for our military aviation. Uh, the, the, no, no. This is a future for EU space. This is a money for EU space program. European Defence Fund, which will be connected, of course, there are links. Will, this is a separate budget. This is something separate, separated. Any other questions? If that is not the case, I would like to thank you for. Attending our press conference. Money, money, money. Always. Because it makes the world go round. <laughs> Even the space. <laughs> If you like this video, please comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.